Hey, what's going on everyone? Ronnie Landis here with Q&A Wednesday and the question that came to me today is from my friend Carly Morgan from culinarykarma.net and her question is basically asking about phytoestrogens and phytoestrogens is a huge topic and it really has a lot to do with the endocrinology aspect of nutrition and health which is basically the study of our endocrine system and hormone secretions in the body and how those hormone messengers actually affect all functions of the body, of the brain, of our skeletal system, our bone density. Um, all factors in health really have a lot to do with hormone secretions and the hormone signalers that are telling our cells what to do. So basically phytoestrogens, for those that out there aren't aware, these are basically plant estrogens or plant female hormones. And this has become a huge topic because literally in our environment we've been so saturated with what are called xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens are fake estrogens or estrogen mimicking compounds such as plastic, BPA, um, metal tin uh, lining, the BPA lining around metal can cans, um, pesticides, herbicides, all forms of chemical fertilizer, a lot of the volatile organic compounds that are off-gassing off of our furniture and our carpets, for example, are forms of xenoestrogens. Now, that's not really what we're talking about now, but understand that these compounds have a very dramatic effect on our hormone balance and cause us to be what's called estrogen dominant or estrogen inflated. Phytoestrogens are, again, plant estrogens, which is a big topic and let me break it down for you guys real quick and try to simplify this as much as I can. Um, there's a lot of talk about minima, minimizing or completely reducing phytoestrogens in the diet, especially when it comes to raw vegan diets. And I see actually the overaccumulation of phytoestrogens in more of the vegan diets to be a huge detriment to people's health and their, their mental balance, their emotional balance, and also their genetic expression and how they're expressing their, if you're a man, their masculinity or a woman, even maybe a hyper-masculinity or a hyper-feminization. We'll save that for another topic as well. But understand, these are subtle influences going on and when we're trying to balance the extremes of our personality and our genetic expression. Okay, now, when it comes to phytoestrogens, understand that they exist in a balance. There's some phytoestrogens that are actually good for you that kind of paradoxically are anti-estrogenic. We're going to get that to that in a second. There's some phytoestrogens that are completely neutral. They really, they're, they do, they're kind of weak and they don't really have too much of an effect on us, so they're kind of neutral. And then there's the phytoestrogens that are extremely adverse to our health and well-being and do cause our hormones to, certain hormones to outcompete our growth and longevity hormones, which are which is our androgens. We're going to get that to that in just a moment as well. Here's what I want to bring to you before we get into the ins and outs here. There's three types of estrogens primarily. This is estrone, estriol, and estradiol. Now, I want to make a distinction here. When we're talking about good estrogens and bad estrogens, they're not all the same thing. For example, these three estrogens are estrogen metabolites. Now, estrone is known to be the most antagonistic estrogen uh, metabolite and is actually the most correlated or causated estrogen in terms of breast cancer, reproductive cancer, certain types of tumors. And there's two types of estrone metabolites. There's 16-alpha-hydroxyestrone, uh, which is considered to be the bad estrone. And then there's 2-hydroxyestrone, which is considered to be anti-estrogenic by definition because it actually inhibits the growth of most tumors. So, simplifying what I just said, it just means that there's some estrogens that are detrimental and there's some that are actually beneficial. Let's talk about the two main phytoestrogens that people know of. One of them is obviously soy. Now when it comes to soy, I am not 
I am not for soy in any form whatsoever. There's multiple reasons for that. Um, there's something called isoflavones that are certain compounds, which are basically the estrogenic compounds in soy that do exacerbate estrogen dominance. This is well known. Um, most soy is genetically modified. About 93% of soy on the market is already categorized to be genetically modified. I am of the opinion that that GMO soy is breeding out into the rest of the the rest of the you know feedlot and whatnot, um, the plantation. And then karmically, I'm not for it either because what they're doing is they're literally wiping out the trees and rainforests in the Amazon to grow soy plantations so we can feed sick cattle in America. It's factory farming operations. The soy, uh, you know, soy, um, soybean. So that's that's what they're feeding them, and that has a whole host of problems that are pretty obvious when you think about eating factory farm animals. Okay, so I am not a fan of soy. I don't really recommend anybody eat soy under any condition. Even the fermented soy, not really a big fan of it. Maybe it works for some people, and hey, if it does, you know, teach their own. But this is my position now. Flax. Flax has gotten a lot of flack over the years, and understandably so. Flax has not been a food that's really um, human beings have really consumed in large quantities historically. Chia seed is a little more historically used and cultivated in human history. Um, there's different parts of the flax story. I want to say that flax is not all good and it's not all bad. It's a very nutritious food, but when it comes to the raw vegan diet and a lot of the, the proliferation of raw vegan information out there, I have to say I'm not a big fan of the way that it's been promoted. You see, flax is very high in omega-3 fatty acids, which is a benefit of it. So what a lot of people have told you in replacement of things like pharmaceutical grade fish oil is that you need to take high amounts of flax oil. Now this is where I see the problem because flax oil is completely unbound by its fiber. The fiber in flax, the type of lignin fiber, actually helps as a drying agent and draws out toxins that are, um, that are you know, in our intestinal tract. And the lignin fiber starts to draw out a lot of these estrogen metabolites out of our GI tract. Now, if you're saturating your body with nothing but flax oil, I, I'm almost guaranteeing that you are going to experience an elevation of some of these estrogens, maybe the estradiol or the, the estrone, for example. You're going to start to create an imbalance of these hormone cascades. That's my opinion, and that's what I kind of see out there when I look at the the mass of raw vegan kind of education and the community at large, a lot of this stuff is going on. So I just really want to be really upfront and honest about that. Now on the other side, flax has a lot of great benefits and actually can act as an anti-estrogen um, compound. For example, these fibers, my friend Peter Ragnar actually turned me on to this idea that flax seed fiber um, can actually help out draw out some of these sex, um, male sex binding globulins in the, in the body that actually bound up with things like testosterone and help convert those into estrogen. We want to bind these compounds up and draw them out of our GI tract. The fiber in flax can do that. So my recommendation is like, listen, if you are going to do flaxseed, probably, you should probably lay off the oil and you should probably do more defatted flax or ground flax as a drawing agent for taking for drawing out toxins out of the GI tract and extracting them out of the body. So that's my opinion on that. Here's the last part of this. We need to start consuming more phytoandrogen foods to create the right ratios and balances for our hormone symphony. Phytoandrogens are plant androgens or plant growth anabolic hormones like testosterone, like DHEA, like um, progesterone, uh, vitamin D, uh, even sodium, the sea salt to some extent is an androgen, um, IGF, insulin-like growth hormone and human growth hormone. These are all growth anabolic androgenic hormones and when we're trying to design a diet 
focused around endocrinology principles, my opinion is that we should start doing more phytoandrogens. And these are things like tribulus, like pine pollen, like maca, especially black maca, like um, panix ginseng, and all the variations of ginseng. Um, macuna, because macuna also increases L-dopamine in the body and the brain, increases our serotonin, increases our neurotransmitters at large, and it also helps our body produce more human growth hormone. Pine pollen is actually um, a natural form of testosterone and helps us produce more testosterone. Um, and also the last part of this I'd like to recommend, if you are vegan, um, which I've been for a number, which I have been for a number of years, one thing I found very helpful for me was actually implementing raw butter and ghee into my diet. And these are all very sustainable forms of animal fats that are just butter. Essentially, it's butter. It has the vitamin A. It has the vitamin D that can become scarce on a completely vegan diet and a raw food diet that I've found out over the years. And it has the long chain fats in it that help with hormone secretions to keep us vital, to keep us in that state of vigor, that state of mental um, focus and cognitive enhancement, emotional um, balance and feelings of well-being. This all has to do in bone mineralization. The vitamin K2 in raw butter helps with calcium absorption in the bones. So all these things are really, we're talking about very similar principles, but again, I know this is a long video. We got into a lot of information. If you didn't notice, this is kind of like I can rant and rave about this stuff all day long. So take what's useful out of this. Hopefully, it's a seed sprouted in your mind, in your heart, and it will show up in some way that benefits you either now or in the near future. Again, that's my take on Carly's question about phytoestrogens. We need to start limiting our estrogen exposure and start upgrading our androgen intake to create overall balance, vitality, and peak potential in the world. Okay, until next time, see you guys later.